Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today at uh, IT's live event. My name is uh, Adam Mortka and I'm a front-end leader and innovation lab expert. And I work in IT for over eight years and I love to help them the early stage of businesses uh, to validate business ideas. And I am a big fan of data visualizations and startups. Today, on behalf of the PGS software, I'm pleased to run the third episode of our LinkedIn chat called It's Live. I will take you to the world of data visualizations and I will present you how to tell interesting stories with numbers in background. Next uh, IT is Live uh, episode will be held by Jan in September. He will be talking about the product ownership. You can register at our dedicated webpage. You can see the link on the screen to get uh, the reminder before the event. All right, so before we jump into action, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So if you can ping me on the chat, just saying that you can hear me, you can see me, it would be awesome. Just bear in mind that there is slight delay uh, between the, the chat and the video. So let's give a, a second to ensure that you can hear me. All right, so I see that you can hear me and see me, so we can jump into the presentation. But before that, uh, I'd like to let you know that if you have any questions, meanwhile, just uh, leave them in the comments and our um, under our QAM session, I will try to uh, answer them at the end of our presentation. All right, so... Let's start. Let's start with the uh, agenda of our meeting. So this is the very simple uh, points that I would like to cover today. At the very beginning, I would start with a small warm up and I will talk briefly about the pie charts, why actually you don't need, need them, why they're overused. Then I will jump into the actually how to tell the stories with the data in first place. Then I will uh, tell a bit more about the how to actually engage your audience into data-driven story. And last but not least, I will tell you a bit more about how this uh, looks in the practice and how we at PGS, we are working with such projects in terms of data visualization. All right. So what's actually wrong with the pie? You can imagine some applications, some dashboards. So if you are thinking about those kinds of applications, about some showing some uh, insights, some kind of dashboards, you probably end up with pictures like this. There is a lot of information, a lot of sections, a lot of slides going around. And for sure, there will be a pie chart. I guarantee you that for 90% of dashboards that I've seen or you, you will see there for sure there will be pie chart. And what's wrong with him? Well, basically there is a number of things that uh, can go wrong with pie chart. Let me briefly uh, show those issues. So the pie chart is most overused chart type. Why is that? Well, well, it looks smart. They are colorful. They seems to be filling out the full information that you, you need. But really, can you, for instance, at looking at this pie chart, can you quickly tell me what are the relations between the, the regions as this pie chart uh, shows some uh, data uh, how the segmentation looks like across different region, regions. Additionally, 
what uh, is or uh, was also the trend it is uh, it looks in the 3d so it uh, it brings additional problem because it adds the perspective so for instance if we are looking at this chart and if you will don't look at the legenda where you have actually the numbers and values there is actually hard to see and define what is the what segment what section takes the largest cut and in fact all three largest areas are exactly the same but due to um, some issues with this chart and especially because of the perspective used the cut that is at very first plan looks like a biggest one but actually the all three uh, sections have the same share which is 25 percent so there is a lot of mistakes that you can make doing or uh, using actually pie charts for instance there is some signs that uh, that could easily tell you that your donut or pie chart is failing. One of them would be that you have to actually put the numbers or the percentage of every slice. Then you would have to do that lab every slice because they are even so small, there's too much of them that you have to use some additional pointers to actually uh, see the values correlated with the given segment. Also, you are running out of the color scheme. So it is also indicator that you have too many slices on one pie chart or donut chart. And also probably you could actually decide to explode the chart to solve those initial problems that causes the initial problem. And how to fix it? Well, there's actually several rules that you can follow to actually declutter the pie chart and make it easy to read and uh, bring the very initial um, value of it because the pie chart should at a glance show you the data that your audience, your, your target people are looking for. So. The first thing that you can do to fix your pie chart is to actually sort and organize data going from the ones that have the biggest share. Then use some actual nominal values and ensure that they add to 100% because the number of uh, examples uh, on the web or on the applications that have numbers that doesn't add to 100% or even exceed the 100%. Then you should avoid comparing pie charts, but I will refer to, to this rule in a second. And you should not use more than six categories and keep it simple. If you are going to present some decisions or some insights coming out of it, you can simply use the rest values as a minority and actually emphasize the most significant value. Talking about what could be worse than a pie chart and what could actually go even worse. You can use multiple charts, pie charts to actually show some trends to show how the data changed over the time. And actually, this is actually hard to read because uh, that how the people uh, see the charts, it's very, very hard to actually compare the angles and the areas that are not square ones. And there is easy actually way to fix that. For instance, if we are talking about some trends showing um, values over the time, it is hard to see those changes on the pie charts, but when you are switched to simple bar chart, 
the differences are actually visible immediately. So you can spot at glance what is happening with the given segment, with the given category, and there is very easy to compare the values over the time. So if not using pie chart is a good idea, what else could be done? What other chart type you should actually choose? So, well, there's actually a number of tools that you can use. Uh, I will provide you with the links to the tools that I use, for instance, when I'm deciding what uh, the what would be the proper chart type for the data. But still, there is uh, actually some initial uh, decisions that you can make when you are deciding on how to choose the proper chart type. First thing to actually check is the data itself. What is the format of data? Are they are nominal values? Or maybe there are some maybe uh, geographic or coordinates. So the first thing is look at your data. And then what is the actual insight that you would like to uh, your audience to be lived with? And there is, a, a, as I said, a couple of tools that actually could support you with this uh, decision and they could actually walk you through like going with the decision tree to actually uh, land up with the proper chart type. And that's uh, that tools I use very frequently. I'd like to jump in the topic uh, of storytelling. Why is it even important? So, Having the data is one thing, but uh, allowing people to actually draw some ideas, draw some insights of it is another. And between that, there's actually another level because people would like to actually be engaged and they would like to uh, be part of it, to feel that they see uh, another level of the data. So. How to actually achieve that? Well, we could use a number of techniques. So for instance, um, we could use uh, some competitor analysis models to show some comparisons between the situation before and situation after. That uh, brings a lot of idea to people that are looking at this visualization. They are started to actually thinking what causes the change. So it actually great idea to not show the point data in some point in a time, but to show actually what was the change over the time. So another way to actually uh, engage people and uh, provide them with the additional context is the fact that Mm, creating a conversation between the company that, for instance, produce the data and someone that will consume them is, is very crucial. Building effective communication goes even beyond the information that is shown at the, at the glance. So if you'd like to Mm, convey people to actually draw some uh, insights that you plan to actually make, it uh, has to actually include some additional layer of communications. And what is also very important to actually create a visualization that a uh, visual appeal. That means that uh, humans are actually notorious for having a shrinking attention they are looking for some nice things. They can even remember it better. This is this nice infographic that I wanted to share with you. It uh, shows how to actually uh, think of the story data 
data storytelling in general, because there are for sure some initial thoughts that are coming from the publishers, there are some stories, and that what the your audience care about. And the sweet spot of the data storytelling is actually to combine all of those three. This is uh, especially important when you are presenting some internal data. And how to actually make the data-driven story engaging? Well, there's a couple steps that you can actually take. So from the very start, you need to understand deeply the context of data that you have to understand not only the data model, but understand what those data uh, represents and what is the business context of them. Is this only uh, coming from single place, single uh, source, or the, those data are combined from the multiple sources? So it is crucial to actually define the whole story. Then you could actually choose the chart type that we actually provide the effective visual effect on the on your audience. So choosing the proper chart type is crucial at this state. state. So you can use some tools that uh, I showed you and I will uh, provide you with the links on that. Then if we are creating a uh, given visualization, we pr probably will land up with too many informations at the very beginning. But it, it is a good thing because we have something that actually to declutter. And then we could focus actually what drives the attentions of your audience. So we could eliminate those additional data, additional information that are irrelevant to the insights that we want to actually achieve. And then we could incorporate a story, a story that is behind those data. Maybe there was uh, some significant point in time that was correlated with this data. Maybe there was a, an a event in the real world that caused some uh, interesting change in data trend. Uh, but how to actually uh, achieve that? Well, there is nice chart how to actually build this kind of tension. So this is uh, very similar to actually telling any kind of story. At very first step, you will create some background. You will expose those data and build the narration about the key players, key data. You are showcasing all the context that is around the data. Then there is a rising actions. So in this phase, in this phase, the supporting facts uh, for such visualization can be introduced to help support the narrative and the key message to the audience as a takeaway. Then we have this climax. This is a crucial point because this will cause actually this tension. And after this, the, the highest point. The, where the takeaway or the highlight should be should be exposed should be shown. So this is the turning point where the decision need to be made to solve a change or dive to consequence of the uh, given choice. Then failing actions. So this phase went to dive to the consequences of this and actually explain with the hint and slim possibility to reversal. So we are explaining all of the context, all of the decision that we made. And then finally, the story is concluded with ray of hope, as well as actionable insights or step that audience can immediately act upon the, the output of these visualizations. This could be actually even explored more, but the 
crucial thing regarding the whole narration and building the tense is to actually leave the your audience with clear takeaways so i could recognize like five core data driven narratives narratives so those are supporting um, types of you can use so for instance types of uh, data that you like to show for instance trends they work very well so showing data over the time and uh, relate to some events in the real world will leave your audience for sure with this feeling that those data are real and they the consequences of this event has a reflection on the, on the trend they could actually see. Another type is to present some comparisons between, for instance, some segments between the competitors and they are very extensively used to actually tell, for instance, political stories. They work really well there because people tend to go with one side or another. Then what uh, really works well are also some rank orders. The, nothing works that well like uh, sorting some data, some uh, categories by some given orders, like then could be some even relationships shown between some specific groups because there is easy to pick when you are showing data in, for instance, in some bar chart in specific order that could actually um, show differences between segments. And uh, last but not least, the surprising data. So, so some best stories actually are made on some surprising facts that were actually discovered during some discovery phase. And they were even not intentional at the very beginning. So showing this, there's a number of examples, for instance, showing the um, given line chart or bar chart, but in contrast to show actually the single value or to be very surprised. So this will be for sure remember. I was uh, telling a bit about how to eliminate clutter and I would like to show you a simple example of that. So we can see uh, those two charts, the before and after. The before shows a lot of data. There is a lot of things going on. Uh, there is a lot of numbers attached to the every, every bar, every every segment and there are uh, even additional pointers to point some even in, in time we can easily um, declutter this to eliminate that information that are irrelevant or they bring noise so if we would like to show some trends we don't need to show specific values unless we are willing to uh, show some specific point in time, some outstanding values. But on the chart on the right side, we used uh, the values for the very last bar to actually so, show the very relevant values that are last in the series. But we can go even further. And with the same chart, we could actually emphasize some specific segment to actually show and uh, show in contrast the values that we are uh, care about the most. And going even further, we could resign from actually showing those segments, those uh, combined bar charts to show just simple line and show this given point in time that caused some change. Right. So this is very important uh, from my perspective to actually provide that information that less is more. It's like going with the 
uh, minification with some uh, trends that actually could show you with less values, with less clear, actually uh, the insights that you'd like to draw from uh, from the this given infographic, this given chart. So um, showing too much data isn't that great in that case. Now I'd like to focus a bit how we are dealing with such projects in PGS software. So the first thing is the crucial one. So I, as I was saying in the very beginning, understanding context of the business that is behind the data is crucial. We cannot even go further with any other step. We cannot think of it, the chart type. We cannot think about who is, you know, um, audience of this given visualization without understanding the business context. This is the, the crucial step that we could ask a lot of questions about how the data uh, has been created, where they come from, what was the initial idea for, for instance, for gather, gathering the data and how they were processed. So this is also the um, step that we could actually utilize some data normalization to actually ensure that we are looking at them from the right angle. Then we are defining actually some actionable items. So we are not only thinking about showing some chart to just create some visualization because we would like, love to actually create such, but in fact, we are thinking what actions could we make on that visualization. If we are looking at the person who will use that in some application, in some dashboard, what decision we could actually enable to, to be made? What insights could be drawn out of, out of it? And if we have that, we could actually focus on building such persona to that will represent our target audience. So we could use it in further iterations to actually go and uh, evaluate if the given uh, visualization, the given chart type actually uh, provides the, our persona with all information that he or she needs. Also, we go again with uh, the step about the data itself. So we do normalize them probably again for the purpose of the given visualization. We are uh, using another steps to actually fulfill with some missing uh, data at this step. Then we could actually dive deep into those models from the purely number perspective from the mathematical perspective to actually understand them. And then we are starting to build the POCs or some experiments that actually could be shown at the very early stage to, to our clients to actually ensure that they are that what they are looking for. And that's the test step where we are testing them with the audience. And we are iterating over and over again. Sometimes we could even uh, go to the very first step to actually maybe re-evaluate and revisit the point where we are we did some assumptions that uh, causes further um, steps for the uh, implementations. So we are not close to actually rethink all over the process. And then if we are good with uh, what we have, we we have actually tested the, the final solution, we could actually then build to scale and build the final solution that uses this uh, as a whole thing. And I believe that concludes uh, my presentation. So I think we could uh, 
jump into our Q&A session. All right, I see some uh, first questions. Are the other tools apart from the chart graphs also good to use in modern data visualization techniques? From the... Yeah, for sure. So if we are thinking about chart graphs, uh, we probably think of some chart, bar charts, pie charts, or some line charts, but there is tons of them. So if we have, it all depends actually on the data you have. So I will go to the very beginning of the circle and think of the data. So yeah, for instance, we could actually use some uh, map tools to actually uh, plot some geo coordinates and uh, data that are geo correlated but in uh, in general i would say that uh, there is nothing that actually could be mm, limited by the tool itself so even if we are uh, going with the table it's part of the visualization it's also some kind of visualization, but it's always, uh, you know, about the final goal. Showing just simple numbers on the dashboard, it could be also the thing that you are looking for. All right, so we could jump into other question. All right, and that's a re really good one. So actually, uh yeah why well, i'm smiling because i love uh animations i love to put a bit of life into uh, visualization to make them interactive but i believe that uh, putting for instance some tooltips of some uh, animation should be only on supportive level i mean that uh, at a glance you should actually be able to draw some initial insights, initial ideas coming out of uh, visualizations, and animation should be just uh, add-on, just uh, extra thing to that. But for sure, for instance, if you are uh, looking at some um, trends or trends over the time, uh, I would love to see probably some uh, nicely animated graphs that actually emphasize how the data were changed. All right, so yeah, the simplicity is the key. Less is more, and I believe it all depends on the result that you would like to achieve. Because when I uh, showed you the graph about the sales and the trends over the time, it could be even uh, simplified to the simple number, because maybe that's what the uh, C staff is, is just looking for, to have the simple decision, buy it or, or sell it. So yeah, the, everything could be simplified. It all depends on the insights or your target audience. We have another question. All right, it's a pretty long one. Let's, let me just quickly uh, read it. Yeah, uh, actually, that's the thing. I, I don't think it, it is really the question. It's uh, more than statement, but I can actually agree with that. So we tend to use things that we know. So if I have tools that provides me with some 
uh, specific chart types that I know. I know how to use them. I know how to normalize uh, data inputs to actually be used within this given chart. I can somehow bias myself and uh, feels to be limited to use some specific uh, bar ch chart types. But in general, I believe that you could uh, never go wrong with using bar chart or line chart. They are very generic and uh, you can never go wrong with them. All right, do we have uh, another question or uh, that's all? All right, I believe that's all uh, what we've got today. Thank you for joining us and submitting your question. They were very valuable and I was uh, very happy to, to answer them. We will send you a full recording of this webinar uh, out soon and you can rewatch it or share it with your friends. And I will um, take care of putting uh, the links for tools and uh, additional articles that I mentioned. So if you'd like to you discuss your security issues personally, please write me a message, actually the data visualization uh, stuff, or if you have any additional questions about the data visualizations, just drop me a message or you can catch me on LinkedIn. I will be happy to, to answer those. And yeah, I believe that's it. We hope to see you soon at the next At Is Live, which will be held in mm, very soon. I hope uh, you will register on our website. Yep. So take care and do not forget to register to our next ITC Live event.